Take a look at the sequence shown on the screen. Try to make a guess at which number comes next. It's pretty obvious that the next number was 10. If you said 10, then you were acting like a scientist. You made a hypothesis that the sequence of numbers had a rule, and then used that hypothesis to guess what the next number was. A simple rule, and most likely the one that you guessed, is that every number is two more than the last one. But that is not the only rule that the sequence could have followed. For example, the sequence could have been defined as the roots of this polynomial equation. What allows scientists to be competent in their hypotheses, in this example that the rule was plus two every term, is that that hypothesis for the sequence is a simpler explanation than any other that could be given. This principle is referred to as Occam's razor. The sequence in this video was an analogy for the natural world. Scientists make observations, and then based on their observations, they make guesses to what types of rules the natural world follows. Take a look at another sequence. There is a rule that the sequence follows. This sequence also follows the same rule, and this one as well. Do you think you know the rule? If I asked you to guess three numbers that followed the rule to test your hypothesis, which numbers would you choose? Perhaps you would choose, or... Well, if you thought those would be good sequences to test the rule, then you were not acting like a scientist. When scientists make hypotheses about the natural world, they want to make sure that their conclusions accurately reflect the real world as much as possible. If you were to test, for example, 4, 8, 16, your test could only serve to confirm your hypothesis and not disprove it. The reason why is that the rule could have simply referred to numbers in increasing sequence, which is even simpler than the hypothesis that they double every term. This particular challenge was first tried on humans in 1960 by cognitive psychologist Peter Wasson. He learned that most people will not test any sequence that may prove their initial hypothesis wrong. Instead, they will continue to believe that the rule is simply a doubling, and will only search for information that confirms what they previously believed, rather than trying to find the truth. No wonder Peter Wasson named this failing of human thought the confirmation bias. The early 20th century philosopher Karl Popper was the first to capture that this was the essential difference between science and pseudoscience. According to Karl Popper, a pseudoscience like acupuncture does not seek to falsify its hypothesis, in this example that acupuncture relieves pain. In contrast, when pain medicine such as ibuprofen is clinically tested, it is always in reference to a placebo, and is done in a double-blind experiment in order to reduce bias. Clinical trials can easily falsify the claims that a medicine works, and therefore the conclusion that ibuprofen works is supported with strong evidence. The two main ideas set forward in this video, Occam's razor and Karl Popper's falsifiability are two cornerstones of the modern scientific thought. They more fully explain what encompasses science than the typical scientific method taught in lower education. However, they are not without their failings. For example, a formal definition of Occam's razor, named Solomonoff's theory of inductive inference, was proven to be uncomputable. In layman's terms, it is impossible to determine with certainty which theory is really the simplest when describing reality. Karl Popper's falsifiability criteria has experienced criticism about how far-reaching it intends to be. In particular, it could be argued that mathematics is not a science according to Karl Popper, but few would argue that mathematics is therefore a pseudoscience that should be ignored. This assertion is especially true considering that mathematics is a crucial foundation of science, not only because it has been called the language of physics, but also because it allows us to prove deductive statements in the first place. Thank you for watching and make sure to check out our other videos.